Okay guys, we are here at the Forest House Muslim Archery Club. So, uh, it's my very first time that I come here. We are in Bangkok, Thailand, and it's a very, very nice day, bright weather, and very, very hot. You know, in Thailand it's always hot. So today it's particularly hot. So, <laughs> it's a very long time that I don't shoot, and I'm very happy to be back in shooting, and welcome to Chinese Archery if you're new to this group, and, um, Feel free to contact me for any reason. Many of you already contacted me, and of course I have a, a video on YouTube by Easy in Italian that explains you like the basics of Chinese archery. So we're going to do it in English now. So many people ask me what what I have to do with the right hand, what I have to do with the left hand. So let's see. I use gloves most of the time because it's safer. The, doesn't ruin your skin it's uh, it's practical of course in a weather like this it's going to be very very hot and your hands are going to sweat likely for me my hands don't sweat a lot but if you are one of those who have sweaty hands you may consider to buy like better clothes than these ones okay so this one is a, it's a very basic traditional archery like long bow style uh, glove where of course the uh, the arrow will run on your thumb and it doesn't ruin your skin in any possible way it's very practical very nice I have this one since many many years I think it was from 3d archery or something uh, website and this one it's adapted so this one was just like a biker glove that I cut off the part of the thumb where I put my ring like this that's it. Rings. Point number one, rings. So a, a ring that is a ring for archery must be done in this way. So it must be elliptical, not circular. Why is elliptical? Because it's elliptical because if I put it in, in this way and then I turn it in this way, the bone will be on its way. And on the way of the border of the ring. So it's impossible that it will go off. For unlock it, I just twist it and it's done in this way. So if it doesn't do this, that means that your ring is wrong. And it took me many, many years for find the right ring. And this one was hand forged by myself. Of course, it's not the first try. And uh, the first try was pretty bad. And now this one is pretty nice very comfortable to me in a very hot weather when your hands are of course larger and very cold weather when your hands are actually smaller your bones will always be the same so when you put it in this way you should be free to come and go then when you lock it, it cannot go off because my bones are bigger than the border the diameter of the ring when it's locked I say locked because it looks like that you lock it Okay, so it must be done in this in this way. How to actually use the tampering? So let me take off my glove. So many people understood it very incorrectly, and also me for many years. Then I study kudo, I study Arab archery, I ask many experts, and we figure it out. Probably, I mean, this is a new martial art, it's a new science. So we are rediscovering something that is lost. So anyone can say uh, pretty much whatever they want. This is my uh, opinion. Feel free to put your comments below or say that I was wrong. This one is better. This one is not better. But this is my experience. So. If you see kudo glove, they can bend your the thumb. So the thumb is actually uh, solid. It's like a solid structure. They can only go against the hand, against the index finger in this way. So it's like when you are pinching someone. Okay, like hey, this. Okay, many kudo masters, so sensei, explaining that you have to actually pinch the string almost not touching the, str the string, all, only pitching the string, and then you snap it. With this one, 
You put it here, you lock it. You put the base of the ring on the middle finger. Here, this part of the middle finger. Then you don't bend the thumb. Okay. Many people think it's like um, that you close it and then you pull it and then you release it. That's completely wrong. The the uh, arrow, so the the um, put it in this way. The string will wibbling, will wobbling in this way if you just do this. Okay. Even if you do this it's even worse actually because you also twist it so it will go in this way in this way it's terrible so and that's why many people say oh it's in not very precise kind of archery because we actually don't know how it was uh, practiced and how it was taught we, we we think we know but we actually we don't probably was extremely precise it certainly was extremely precise so we put it in this way thumb down actually bend and the other one the index finger close okay so it's a kind of praying mantis if you have practiced kung fu before kind of stance of the hand okay this way in order for lock it this one is not enough so you will probably be able to pull a 25 pounds bow but you won't be able to pull a 40 pound bow or 50 pound bow or even 100 pounds bow. okay so you will need to Close it in this way, this way, and with this side of the hand to twist it. So that the external horn of the knock, it will be pushed toward the string. So let's put the case that your knock is a war knock. Okay, super wide. No problem, because you will be able to put it here, then it's not stable, it will go up and down, it will go off, but doing like this, you lock it, so you will have the, this effect. Okay, you will push the arrow on the bow. If you leave it free, the arrow will go in this way, or will fall down, it's normal. But if you do it correctly, you just push it in, and then you, with this method, you just clip it and twist it. So it's always there. You can do where you want. It's always here because it will always go on the bow. Okay. Now, what does this hand? Why does some kind of twist? Why this way that? Okay. So same method that you will use for handle a handgun is exactly the same. You will be tense in a way, otherwise the, the, the weapon drop, but you will be extremely relaxed. So you need to have a kind of special relaxed tension in the hand where you have to work a lot with the last and the first finger in a kind of counterbalance so you will have this one pushing in and the web of the thumb pushing forward so you will have this the middle finger act as counterbalance you know that long like iron thing that go off from the modern compound bows or modern like recurve bows at the Olympic Games. Yes, you already have it and it's over here. Okay. Don't be scared that you will hit your index finger with the uh, with the arrow because it's actually quite impossible. I do it for many years and never happened to me. Because it will, they will run in a very different way. Okay. This one will help you to don't go completely opposite. Will help you to stabilize and go forward because you will need to bend the up limb by yourself. Of course, it's a, if it's like Kudo where 
the upper limb is really really huge compared to the lower limb that's kind of easy much more difficult in a bow like this one but you will need to one two three and have a kind of from a lower very low stance to a very high stance one 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 you will need not to squeeze the handle you don't have to squeeze the handle first because this will be very unstable if you squeeze it with the muscles muscles are not steady second you will won't be able to actually let the bow go so you will need to lock it keep it and make it flip very difficult it's it's not easy I, I, I work on that every single time but the thing that many of you are asking me is why you do that why you do that like I can just do this without moving this and my accuracy is pretty good why you should you should waste everything that you are doing just for flip the bow in a kind of a fashion way just for fashion you know just just it, it makes no sense it does make sense if you study Kyudo. So in Kyudo, they do the release quite a lot. Of course, it's a, it's a vertical release. It's not a parallel to the ground release, typical Chinese and Mongolian style. So it's, a kind of, it's actually easier, especially with that kind of bow. It really will flip in your hands by itself. It's quite easy, actually. But, but, but why we do that? So the idea behind Chinese archery Japanese archery and this kind of using a bow as a slingshot is that you will increase the power of penetration of the uh, arrow on the target so first of all the arrow will travel parallel to the ground for longer distances second you will have a major better impact on the target which is very important in, but people can say, oh yeah, but I don't have to kill anyone if I have to play, it's, it doesn't really matter. Yeah, it's true, it doesn't really matter. We don't have to kill anyone, especially someone with an armor. We don't really need it. It's, 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 it's a stupid <laughs> thing to, to, to train. It doesn't make any sense. But what we do is we try to use as much power that is stored inside your body and inside the bow as much as possible that was the goal of oriental archery in general as a activity for the mind and the body okay i know it sounds pretty strange but actually that's the reason because we don't need bow and arrow in our modern time for survive or for go to war we have rifles we have guns we have everything nuclear bombs we don't we don't really need it what we try to keep is the way of the way of archery Taoism Tao means the way of the procedure the tradition the tradition of archery is this is not using the proper arrows or having the right shapes and be dressed in a certain way. That's, that's not very important. What's important is the way off. And the way off is using a bow as a slingshot. So I just use the bow and I use my body in order to draw the bow as much as possible. And when he is finished to boom, it goes by itself and the moment that goes by itself for for you for the first time that you actually achieve it it's an amazing sensation it will just go inside your body a kind of happiness because you were able to use and not use a tool that's very difficult to achieve with a sword or it's very very difficult to achieve with another kind of weapon but with a bow because a bow is a weapon that have a function so it really needs you, because it's not a weapon per se. I cannot throw the bow, I cannot use the bow in this way, okay? So I need to actually use the bow for, ha for see this function. And that makes lots of difference. For a person like me who have used swords, who have used axes, whatever, spears, 
for 30 years. Because when I approach the boy, I say, wow, Bo needs me. But at the same time, it doesn't. Because once you use the entire bow and then ploop, you feel the end of the movement that will go inside you. Okay, so we say many, 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 many things that every single thing that I say, it requires at least some months of explanation, so practical explanation. What can I say? Of course, the posture is very important. How you put your hips, how you put your shoulders, your elbows, your neck, okay? Posture is very, very important. I saw people on YouTube uh, trying to shoot like this, okay? That's, of course, you won't be able to flake I don't know how to say, to use properly uh, the bow in Chinese archery if you don't have the proper posture as well and if you are not coordinated as well uh, if you are not uh, relaxed if you are very very stiff so that's why uh, Japanese Kudo traditional method don't really require the bow for the first three years why? People say, oh, because Japanese are very strict, Japanese are like soldiers that, no, 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 it's not, it's not about that. It's that because you need that kind of discipline in order for achieve a state of the body that is a basic requirement of archery. You won't be able to achieve it with the bow in the hands. Because with the bow in the hands, you will care only to do what you're doing and to focus on the actual object that you are holding your hands but now you have to focus first on your body so you will have your posture one two three then you will have static postures one two three four how you use your back, how you use your spine. You will need to pull up, open. It's like opening a door. See how I go inside, inside the position with all of myself to push the shoulders down, to push the elbows down. So everything become very heavy. Every intersection of my body become really, really heavy. And the muscles very relaxed, but at the same time, I'm using my tendons, so tendons I push, I push here, I push here, I push down, I push forward, one, I'm very stable, because I'm on, on my bones, on my body structure, I don't rely on my muscles, if I rely on my muscles, I will tremble, and that's not good for actually, I need to be very, very stable, I need to be fast, but stable, one, two, One, I open with my breathing technique. From here it goes here, from here it goes here, and then go down. Now I'm training a very short throw because I have this new bow from Ali Bow very short. I usually had a much longer throw and having a um, more traditional position. So it will go down or up. So there are two basic throws. Let's say that is 28 inches and 32, 33 inches. Of course, it depends how long are your arms. And you can train one, you can train Two, that goes here so it's the opposite okay lungs and heart the heart is very very important the meridian of the heart is very important in archery now I don't want to say too many things in this video I really say a lot a lot it's crazy oh, so sorry for that okay just I wanted to do a basic introduction just for explain to you how complex and complicated is this art that we are exploring. So feel free to say whatever you want and to comment, to criticize, whatever I say. I mean, this is an open field. 
everyone is an expert, no one is an expert.